This is KCTV English News. I'm Nick Brontis. Following the confirmation of dozens of measles cases in Korea, Jeju health authorities are ramping up efforts to prevent a local outbreak. They say that there has yet to be a confirmed case on the island, but that the disease is spreading rapidly in the Daegu area. In order to keep Jeju free from the outbreak, medical authorities are urging everyone here to get their vaccinations and to maintain a high level of personal hygiene. They want people to make sure that they received the required two shots for the vaccination and that they report to medical authorities any suspicious measles-like symptoms, such as a rash accompanied by a fever. The national government will fund a preliminary feasibility study into the construction of a bypass on the Pyeonghwaro. Provincial officials say the Ministry of Economy and Finance has chosen the building of a Gwangyong Dopyeong connector to be on the list of projects that qualify for a feasibility study. If the road is deemed feasible and then selected as a government funded project, Analysts say its construction would cut the travel time for people going to and from the airport. Another benefit, they say, would be less traffic congestion in western Jeju City. The Provincial Water and Sewer Authority says it is now supplying Halim with 10,000 tons of water from the Choji Reservoir as part of the 20,000 tons of water it gets from the Ongpo Basin which is the existing water source for the community. Officials say this is part of efforts to remove public distrust in the quality of the Halim water supply. The water office has been piping the 20,000 tons of water from the Ongpo Basin through an advanced treatment system and a rapid filtering facility. The concentration of nitrate nitrogen, however, has remained high. The Water and Sewer Authority plans to develop 10 underground wells and finish pipe construction by next year in the Sogwang area. The water from those wells will replace the 10,000 tons of water that passes through the advanced treatment facilities at the Halim filtration plant. Police have beefed up patrols in the lead-up to the Lunar New Year holidays. The Jeju Provincial Police Agency is working with municipal police to patrol public locations, including small stores, which often have inadequate security systems and traditional markets. The enhanced efforts will continue through the last day of the holidays, February 6th. Police will also increase their monitoring of households in which domestic violence may reoccur, and they will put more officers on night duty to prevent thefts and pickpocketing. More people are taking advantage of a government service to find ancestral land that is legally theirs. Provincial officials say they received 6,600 applications for the service last year. Authorities were able to provide the locations and lot numbers of 7,300 plots of land to 1,900 applicants. 21,000 applications have been submitted over the past three years. Officials have helped 6,200 people identify 22,000 plots of land, totaling 19 million square meters that were rightfully theirs. To access the service, an applicant must have both legal inheritance rights and a copy of his or her family register that demonstrates the ancestor's death. This week on Jeju A to Z, Todd Thacker takes a brief look at a neighborhood on the island's north shore called Tapdong. As we'll see now, it has benefited from a cultural and financial revival in recent years. Of all the areas of Jeju City familiar to residents and travelers alike, it's an older district on the north coast and east of Jeju International Airport that dominates the city. Tapdong has a long history as a hub of village life and commerce. As Jeju grew into a full-fledged city in the 20th century, businesses came and went, many relocating to other areas. 
but certainly in the last decade or so, it has enjoyed the benefits of its financial and cultural renaissance. It is the site of a number of large-scale brand-name hotels. Mom-and-pop stores mix in with major shopping outlets and an extensive underground shopping mall. And then there are the well-established large traditional markets. Dongmun Market, for example, is where the freshest seafood and produce can be found at great prices. Tapdong is also a main venue for the celebrated Tamna Cultural Festival, the Kim Man Duk Memorial Hall, and Arario Museum, which has succeeded in accentuating the history and artistic spirit of the area. The open-air Jeju Seaside Concert Hall is also a center for music and dramatic performances. Jeju Port is a major landmark, serving both Jeju's substantial ferry and container ship traffic, as well as the thousands of domestic and international cruise ship visitors who arrive daily. And finally, there's nearly two kilometers of coastal boardwalk and breakwater, along which couples and families like to stroll. You'll find basketball courts, bike rentals, and plenty of space to take advantage of. Tapdong really does have something for everyone. Todd Thacker, KCTV. Pick fruit, ride horses, feed farm animals, and more this month at UAD Natural Park's Camellia Festival. Skies will remain mostly clear Thursday. For the details, here's your forecast. The low in Jeju City will be 3 and the afternoon high 10 degrees. In Sogibo, temperatures will fall between 4 and 14. In eastern regions around Songsan, the low before lunch will be 2 and the high later on 10 degrees. Across the island in Gosan, temperatures will range from 4 to 9. And the morning low up on the mountain at Songpanak will be minus one and the afternoon high six degrees. Out on the water, winds will be out of the northwest and north at seven to 11 meters per second and seas will be relatively calm. Here's what's coming up. And that brings us to the end of today's broadcast. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow at the same time. We're now on YouTube. Find us by searching for KCTV E News Jeju. Shichang Jaidubun, Kumapsumida.